I'll be honest, War for Cybertron Kingdom is the most hyped I've been for an upcoming Transformers line in quite a while. And no, not just because it's paying tribute to a core part of my childhood, but even the promo shots have been incredible. The sheer effort put into the volcanic scenery, reminiscent of the Beast Wars cartoon, just brings these figures to life. If Kingdom doesn't sell like hotcakes, I'd be very surprised. That being said, I want to give the line time to flesh out a bit, before diving into it. Though rest assured, I'll have at least one Kingdom review up by the end of this year. So to get into the spirit, I guess, I'm reviewing an actual Beast Wars figure, presenting the Predacon, Manterra. I would say, you'll never guess what this guy named Manterra turns into, but the Takara Redeco, Mantis, takes the oil cake. As a praying mantis, Manterra is surprisingly kibble-free, as in, there are hardly any out-of-place robot parts lying around, not even limbs. The arms turn into the forelegs, while the robot legs tuck neatly underneath the abdomen. As for the deco, both greens and the red eyes with black… pupils? suit a praying mantis, though from what I can tell, the red markings and all traces of purple are more for colour variety, and I think it looks good. The moulding is also pretty decent, the vein etchings on the wings in particular are a very nice touch. I guess the only oddity, design-wise, is that the middle and rear legs are much shorter than on an actual mantis, though given what's to come, this was likely intentional. What's shocking is that, for such a fairly obscure entity, Manterra has one of, if not the most, articulated beast modes of any Beast Wars figure from the line's first two years. Each foreleg is made up of three ball joints and a hinge. You can even make use of the transformation swivels nearby. The neck and antenna hinge back and forth, while the mouth opens and closes. Lastly, the wings and rear two pairs of legs are ball jointed. Admittedly, only the forelegs have any real posability, but still, impressive. And speaking of the forelegs, the second year of Beast Wars toys introduced beast modes with attack gimmicks. Open up Manterra's forelegs, and push at the back to fire… energy discs, I guess. If I could sum up Manterra's robot mode in one word, it'd be characterful. Between the colours and that slasher smile, I can see why some have compared him to the Joker. Coupled with the slender proportions, long arms with no actual hands, and what may very well be three extra eyes on his forehead, you have yourself a creepy, scheming, and all-around sinister addition to the Predacon ranks. Though I can see the argument for how the arms could be considered lazy, since they don't actually transform, they just carry over from beast mode. Though the upside to this is that they retain all the articulation from before. And as for the rest of the toy, the neck, hips and knees are ball jointed, while the toes and heel spurs close up on hinges, for whatever that's worth. There are some slight hindrances, namely the mantis head on his crotch, and the remaining bug legs decorating his torso, but at the same time, it's probably why those legs are as short as they are, any longer and they'd be even more intrusive. Hey Drillbit. For features, the discs still fire, and being one of the post-1996 Beast Wars figures, he sports an Energon chip. On his scalp. He has quite the interesting noggin, doesn't he? I'll admit, at first I didn't think much of Manterra, I just had other figures in mind when it came to reviewing or even merely messing around with them. However, after playing with him for a bit, I gotta say, he's pretty underrated. Very clean alt mode, dynamic robot design, serviceable gimmicks, and just a lot of fun to pose. Initially I thought he'd, at most, rank silver, and he's not without his faults. But you know what? I'm more than willing to give him a gold. I don't know if he'd make my top 10 Beast Wars toys overall, but for the pre-Transmetal era, well, we'll see. 